confess I failed, not only once in life. We all talk about how successful we are, especially on Instagram and Facebook, but, but nobody talks about failure. Wow, that's very sensitive. Um, <laughs> that's perfect. Um, let's change it. Let's talk about failing. When I woke up this morning, I asked myself, why am I doing stuff like TEDx? I was so nervous. And why am I occasionally trying out new things, things that actually frighten me? I have to make another confession. I'm afraid of failing right now because I've never held this presentation in English in public before. But do you know what? There is no failure. But now. <laughs> At the beginning of our lives, we had no concept of failure. <clears throat> Scientists conducted a study in which they filmed infants when those learned to walk. Afterwards, they counted the infant's steps. How many times does an infant fall on a single day? It's 14,000. Can you imagine? How many times does it fall? 100. So it's 14,000 and 100. As you can see, falling is part of learning to walk. Sometimes failure hurts. I got this scar in my, on my face when I learned to walk. I fell on the ladder of a toy car like this and got hurt. Memories vanish but the result remains. I can walk no matter how painful the process of learning was. Who failed in life? Please raise your hands. Ah, look around. You are not alone. Don't let us just talk about how successful we are. Let's talk about setbacks and defeats. They are a part of our lives. That's why I'm having this podcast, when I'm asking people two questions. Firstly, what's your biggest failure? Secondly, what have you learned from it? I personally get bored of stories full of success. Bestsellers like Harry Potter and Hollywood blockbuster like Star Wars are successful because of the ups and downs of the heroes. Nobody's interested in the story in which the main character is having success, more success and more success. We all want to see characters which suffer, learn and finally win. It's the so-called hero's journey. I failed. 25 years ago, I began to study history here in Göttingen at the university. I wanted to become a journalist. I became a journalist while still being a student, but I've never finished my studies. I wanted to do some things in life, but failed to achieve them. I wanted to be a soccer player when I was a child, but I'm afraid I'm not going to play for the German team at the World Cup. But I wouldn't call this failure. It's just a missed opportunity. My marriage failed. I'm going to move out of the house in two weeks really frustrates me and makes me really sad. But I do not regret the time we had and I'm really thankful that we became parents. Do you think that I failed? <laughs> 
Failure is a part of success. Actually, there's no such thing as failure. I think this is what we call life on the right side. As failure is a part of failing, I don't want you to prevent from it, but I want you to fail smartly. Therefore, I brought you five steps to fail. I brought you the results from my interviews I took from my podcast and from my, my research, and I want to share this knowledge from others with you. Honestly, I failed to find five steps. But trust me, four three quarter is good enough. You might consider this symbol to be a zero. This cross zero is a symbol for average. Our society orientates us to be average. Our average grade at school determines what we can study. Our average grade at university determines which job we can do. Stay away from average to preserve your uniqueness. Some of you may know that feeling of despair. Some of us don't believe in their strength, actually others can see them. But I'm sure that everyone here is special and has something to offer to the world. I want to tell you a story. Who recognizes this guy in the picture? I can see them. It's um, Sylvester Stallone. It's the Oscar winner. And what's his most movie, most famous movie character? It's Rocky. And the movie tells an American dream story of Rocky Balboa. It shows us a way from rags to riches of an uneducated but well but hard kind of uh, boxer working as a debt collector for a lone shark in the slums of Philadelphia. It was the year 1975, Sylvester Stallone faced many obstacles. He was quite poor, he had to take the bus because his car was broken and he had nothing to eat, neither for him nor his dog Butkus. That's Batkis. So he decided to sell his beloved dog. He went to a liquor store nearby, put a sign around Batkis' head saying $100. A man named Little Jimmy stopped by and gave him 50 bucks. Stallone lost Batkis. In the meantime, Stallone wrote the Rocky script in just a few days straight. Afterwards, he negotiated with the Hollywood studios. They offered him $360,000, which was a lot of money in the mid-70s. Sylvester Stallone refused. Do you know why? He intended to play Rocky, but Hollywood wanted a famous actor for this role. And much more important, Sylvester Stallone's lower left side in his face is paralyzed since birth. They finally would allow him to play Rocky, but would only gave him $35,000. So it's less than one-tenth, and he got a percentage of profits. So this is Stallone accepted. The first thing he did when he left the studio with the money, he went back to the man who bought his dog, offered him to buy it back, but the man refused. Stallone backed him and pleaded with the man 
it cost him $3,000 to buy it back and a role in the Rocky movie. Rocky, Rocky's budget was $1 million. It earned $200 million at the box office and its sequels earned over $1 billion and made this man, Sylvester Stallone, very rich. By the way, Vatkis has a role in Rocky. Let's do new things. Let's do new... It's very sensitive. <laughs> Let's do new things because it makes us feel alive and gives us a different perspective. Um, we do all the same, all the, if we repeat all the time what we always do, we get the results we always get. I want to invite you for a short game where we all can fail in public and hopefully survive it. It's called Hunter and Rabbit. And I need you. And I need your hands. Please play this game with me. We have the hunter, and to the other hand we have... And now the hunter is shooting at the... And then the other side, and then faster, shooting at the... <laughs> I've practiced it for a while, so I'm, I'm much better. So who failed? Be honest. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, that's great about life. We all fail many times in life, but usually we survive it. I totally understand that concept, but I'm not willing to accept it for all situations in my life. Maybe you know what I mean, or maybe you have a friend who understands what I mean with this. I want to tell you my personal story about this, how I almost killed my company by ignoring this core principle. It was a Thursday, it was April the 28th, 2016. It was my son Anton's third birthday. We had his great parents and aunts in our house. We had this great coffee table with handmade muffins, apple pie, strawberry cake with cream. Everything seemed to be perfect, but I couldn't enjoy it. Why? Because I had to list my savings for the bank. What had happened? I'm a publisher since 2005. Wow, it's magic. <laughs> um, since 2005, run my own company. And because I'm not really good at finance, I asked my father, who already got retired, to help me here. And he helped me and made me expand with my regional business magazine. And because he was in charge, I, know, I showed no longer any interest in my financial situation. After a while, my father told me that we got in trouble and we ran out of money. He was quite relaxed. He was. I don't know, 63 at that time, but I was alarmed. In the morning of Anton's birthday, my bank accountant called me and said that I had to list my savings the same day to get a loan the other day. I was angry with the bank when I was sitting there, and I was angry with my father because he was sitting there having coffee and having cake with my son. We got the money from the bank, but I had to dismiss three of my six employees because of my mistakes. It felt horrible. I personally didn't earn any money for half a year. It was a crappy year. Surprisingly, at the end, we were able to write a black zero, which means we didn't earn any money, but we didn't lose any. And it took a while, not on this special day of my son, that I realized what I did wrong. I didn't take responsibility for my company and its financial situation. I changed that and was lucky at the same time. And I'm very thankful today that my company <coughs> survived this delicate situation. 
2017 was the most successful year in my company's history. And this summer, 2019, we paid our last mortgage after three years and are back on track. Let's talk about failures. Please tell your whole story. Talk about the ups, oh, the ups and downs. Ah, I can show you how, how to do it. Um, let's talk about it because the challenges we are facing today, like climate change, are huge. And let's make this world a better place. We're running out of time. And remember, falling is part of learning to walk. Do you still fail or do you already fall forward? Fall forward. Thank you. <laughs>